Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I'm on my way back from the weekend in Herefordshire, staying at the Tower, probably another silly video of that. Uh, just been dropped off at Clifton Hampton in Oxfordshire, not far from Abingdon on the River Thames. Uh, my family are going to visit friends nearby, so I have a couple of hours free to go for a walk. I thought I would go and take a look at Whittenham Clumps. Uh, just a just a daytime afternoon stroll. Wonderfully a bit of uh, you know day off work on Monday. The plan from here is just to follow a section of the Thames path. And that hopefully will take me to Whittenham Clumps. It's sort of uh, off in the distance down there, but the uh, the barley mow was featured in Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat. Um, I forget what happened there, but they, I think they stopped the night there or something. I'm not sure if it was particularly eventful, but um, it was a pub mentioned by name in uh, Three Men in a Boat, which uh, if you haven't read, um, I think a lot of people will get given that to read at school and perhaps, uh, perhaps it's lost on um, short attention span adolescents being forced to read something that perhaps isn't in the, uh, the style they particularly want to be reading at that point, or perhaps they don't want to be reading at all, but um, uh, I only read it as an adult and thought it was fantastic. Genuinely funny, despite being, what, now 130 years old. Here I am, uh, strolling along the Thames, carefree on a Monday afternoon. This is lovely, it's got this sort of uh, languid, is that the word I'm looking for? Languid air of summer, early summer. Well, perhaps it's still late spring, technically. I never know when we switch from one to the other. The, uh, the meadows here by the Thames, strewn with buttercups and all that. Buttercups. As far as the eye can see. And that's the village of Burcott across the water there. Some rather grand houses. It's a rather more pleasant way to spend a Monday afternoon than sat at a desk. I usually return journeys from uh, weekends away or holidays can be a bit grim. Kind of the uh, sort of prospect of being back to work and back to normality and all that. But uh, we tried to break up the return trip from Herefordshire. We were staying in Helmwy. We've come the sort of slightly more scenic route via uh, you know, Herefordshire country lanes to begin with. And then on to the Cotswolds. Stopped off there for a quick spot of afternoon tea. Maybe I can cut to a segment of that. Uh, and now here in, um, in Oxfordshire. Something very serene there. Didn't realise cows are amphibious. I think that's Whittenham Clump, <laughs> at least one of the clumps. Are there two or possibly three hills uh, over there in front of us? So this, is, uh, this is Day's Lock. Sorry, I've had to take a layer of tweed off. And, uh, wow, well, it's a bit loud, I hope you can hear me. But the, um, the footpath, the Thames path, continues sort of over the weir here, but then crosses back over so just for the sake of that small piece of land, um, you've got to, which apparently is, you know, can't have a footpath going across it. You have to cross over and cross back again, it looks like, according to the OS map. Still, you know, it breaks up the um, route a bit. And uh, correspondingly, here's the, the lock side of the, the lock. Sign there with some local info. We are hopefully going over that way to Whittenham Clumps. Over the river now, and that's the church at Little Whittenham. So we're uh, approaching the higher of the two clumps to begin with. And this one's called Round Hill. Gets up to about 120 meters, or well, it says 121 on the OS map. Wikipedia tells me that the uh, clumps are the most visited outdoor site in the administrative county of Oxfordshire. 200,000 visitors a year. So uh, nice, nice to be here on a Monday when I uh, at least uh, when I at least. So far, I seem to have the whole place to myself. I was just thinking to myself, what would be nice is if there were a bench at the top so I could 
sit comfortably and admire the view and lo and behold there are in fact a selection of benches before I uh, have that sit down perhaps we should uh, take a pan around the view from here 120 meters or 121 meters is obviously hardly a mountain it's uh, it's barely even a hill but um, a lot of Oxfordshire is really quite flat so uh, even that small promontory a small projection whatever the word I'm looking for is local maxima does seem to give quite an impressive view you can see back along the way I've walked sort of sneaking along the Thames there Clifton Hampton over there in the distance in the foreground the church down at um, is it Long Whittenham I've already forgotten the name one thing that's quite surprising about Whittenham clumps despite being the uh, most visited outdoor site in the administrative county of Oxfordshire actually um sorry for the terrible <laughs> map graphics actually not open access lands there are footpaths running across it but uh, that inner section of woodland there uh, appears to be fenced off okay well perhaps there is some sort of sounds like a permissive access there the gate's not locked so um the clumps are thus named for these clumps of beech trees that are planted on top and they're also some of the oldest planted beech trees in England, um, planted in the 1740s. Paul Nash referred to the view from the clumps as a beautiful, legendary country full of old gods long forgotten. So uh, should we go and take a look at the, uh, the next hill, Castle Hill over there? We're over at nearby Castle here, Castle Hill here. It um, looks like it has uh, an outer embankment and ditch. Conveniently now, some steps up the side. And, uh, this is apparently an Iron Age hill fort, but possibly with some earlier late Bronze Age earthworks. And, uh, I think it has been excavated again within the last few years found more evidence of uh, an Iron Age settlement roundhouses, evidence of roundhouses and, uh, and then a later Romano-British settlement curious to me that the uh, slightly lower of the two hills that are practically next door to each other Castle Hill was chosen for the site of a, a hill fort rather than Round Hill over there which is uh, good uh, five or ten meters higher up because uh, you know as a vantage point obviously the slightly lower hill has a blind spot in the shape of the slightly higher hill over there and of course at that time it wouldn't have had the very tall beech trees that now give it its name unlike the uh, the woods on the top of round hill on castle hill it's considered so fragile that there is uh, absolutely no access not just a fence but a padlock on it so uh i will i'll have to content i'll have to be content with just taking a walk around the perimeter there was a tree stood here once upon a time with a poem carved into it by john tubbs um, and I believe the tree fell over, fell down and uh, was, was rotten, um, some sort of fungal decay died uh, about 10 years ago. So it's no longer here and I suppose even if it were here it would be behind the fence now perhaps. Shall I read a few lines? Poetry Corner with Tweedy. <laughs> this bit's always popular in any of these videos isn't it? As up the hill with labouring steps we tread, where the twin clumps their sheltering branches spread, the summit gained at ease, reclining lay, and all around the widespread scene survey, point out each object and instructive tell the various changes that the land befell. 
where the low bank the countrywide surrounds. That ancient earthwork formed old, Mercia's bounds. In misty distance see the barrow heave. There lies forgotten, lonely Quichelm's grave. Quichelm, I'm probably mispronouncing, was the king of the uh, Yewise. Yewise? G-E-W-I-S-S-E tribe who were sort of the uh, the precursors to the kingdom of Wessex and they uh, lived in this area in the uh, the upper reaches of the Thames. He died in uh, 636 AD. Uh, not exactly sure who the uh, the Iron Age tribe who built the hill fort here were. Uh, hard to find any um, info on that but perhaps I'll uh, do a bit more research when I get back home and splash that on the screen if uh, do figure that out. Going to retrace my steps some of the way from here, so back down to Long Whittenham or whatever it was called, and then uh, over there to Dorchester where I'm going to finish my walk today. Back over the river now. Did try to film the uh, crossing but fumbled pressing the button on the GoPro, so uh, and heading to Dorchester. Breezy. I think that's some kind of uh, dog rose, wild rose, isn't it? I think this is uh, still hawthorn. I'm used to seeing the flowers sort of whiter than this, but these have this, uh, this very uh, pretty pink edging. Some uh, elderflower here. Hmm. Footpath going through the allotments here. Yeah. Allotments are apparently the former site of part of the Roman settlement of Dorchester. The uh, lovely entrance to Dorchester that makes. Very smart thatched cottages, timber frame houses, very uh, appealing looking pubs here in Dorchester. Uh, more of a hotel and hotel the George there rather a handsome pub hotel there has the uh, definite air of a coaching in you can see the uh, presumably the old coach entrance there through to the courtyard cheers from the uh, George Hotel just walk through the uh, see the archway Indicative of an old coaching in there, um, very modest glass of beer. Um, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.